Hi, Fred Dawson here with Screenplays. We're at NAB and at the Beer Matrix booth. We have an opportunity to speak with Steve Ottgen, who is the CMO of Beer Matrix. And at this moment in time, there's probably nothing more important to uh, making the market move where it wants to go than figuring out how to secure all these different outlets, all these modes of delivering the service when high value content that's always been protected in a closed managed network is now being flung out there to every conceivable device over every conceivable network. What do you see as the challenges in, that need to be met here, both from a threat perspective, in terms of how stuff can be stolen, and also from the perspective of just being able to manage all this? Very good question. Hi, Fred. Thanks for, uh, thanks for stopping by. Sure. Um, so Very Matrix has been in the software-based uh, pay TV security for around about 10 years. And when we started in, in that industry, it was something called Telco TV, now also commonly known as IPTV. And it was delivery of premium video content on an IP network, a managed IP network, to a set-top box, to a TV screen. Very, very easy. Okay, so we fast forward 10 years, and now consumers are driving the requirements uh, to the content owners and pay TV operators multi-screen world, very mobile world, uh, really good mobile devices, the iPad itself has fueled a lot of that desire. The resolution on an iPad is actually better than most TV screens in, in the living room. And, and so there's a very clear backdraft of people looking for uh, a seamless uh, video delivery to so multi-device. Basically what's happened is the threats have changed. Um, Ten years ago, Delivery to set-top boxes meant that you could put a smart card in a set-top box and then obviously it was an arms race against the pirates. So pirates would either try to clone the smart card or they would try to intercept the so-called control word which was the uh, key that would allow the decryption of content without paying for it. So again, fast forward 10 years, and now we have a multi-device, uh, multi-network type of landscape uh, with many devices that A, cannot even accommodate a smart card because there's no smart card slot, and, and B, actually don't need one because they're connected. And in a connected environment, you can actually be much better in control of what's happening on the device than, than you could be in the old way of broadcast, uh, one-way type of deployments. So again, in order to, to, to actually fulfill the requirements of the, the content owners and, and also satisfy the desires of, of the end consumer, what we need is a ubiquitous um, security paradigm that will will guard against those threats, not only at a network level, but also at a device level, and, uh, and also enable protection against such things as screen scraping, uh, such things as stealing content through PCs, uh, pirate websites, those kind of threats. And those kind of threats are best addressed with, with a software-based solution. Right now, we're getting into a phase where what was TV everywhere as an on-demand kind of service is moving into the live feed of high-value content. Um, and, and again, this goes to the level of threat that, that might emerge because that content so valuable can be stolen, as you say, distributed out over the web. And, and then I understand some of these people are actually uh, leveraging the uh, Google ad networks of the world to sell advertising on the stolen content. Right. So it, it's a serious matter. And, and, and I guess one of the questions that, that everybody has to think about, totally apart from what each of these outlets and types of networks and types of devices require with security, is how to do this in a coordinated, cohesive way from a management standpoint. If you're a service provider and you want to make sure that you're getting the best possible content live to all you know, over all your network outlets how do you do that I mean are you in a position now where that can be managed centrally even though each network and each device has a different requirement yes absolutely it's that again that is customer driven operator 
driven. Um, the operator doesn't want to be managing disparate networks, disparate security solutions. They need to provide a, a really seamless quality of experience delivery to their customers. Um, but they also need to address the the myriad of devices, the viewing devices that are now available um, in, in the uh, delivery chain. And, and so what Very Matrix has done ha has uh, in introduced something called multi-rights. So it means we don't necessarily try to reinvent the wheel. We take the, the native Very Matrix solution, which is tried and tested in over 30 million end subscribers, and, and we add such things as Microsoft Play Ready um, to, to that solution. Uh, we add functionality to support uh, Marlin, uh, MPEG Dash, all those kinds of things, but it's all managed from one centralized um, management console. And it also it, it ensures a, a smooth experience for the end user because I may be watching something on my living room TV screen, um, I need to go to work, uh, but I'm commuting on a train, and so I want to continue watching on my mobile device. I should be able to pause that video on, on the main screen, and then when I get on the train, watch it on my mobile device. Mm -hmm. The rights management needs to be there to do that, okay? And not only does it need to be there, but it needs to be managed in a seamless form, and, and that's where I think Very Matrix really shines. It's interesting, you bring up that, that whole idea of that seamless inner movement and, and being able to have the same experience across multiple devices. Um, and, and that gets into some serious complexity with, with the changes in formats that have to be managed and the various DRMs or whatever that are going out there uh, for those different devices to create that seamless experience. Uh, so what you're saying is that there's a real quality of experience component to having a, a very rigorous uniform security management uh, operation uh, that that can can actually have an effect on the appeal of the service in the in, in the final it analysis. Can. It, it, it starts in the, um, the the user experience with the operator. Um, you know, how, how do I go from one device to the other? Uh, how do I log on? How do I register that device? How, do, how are the rights defined? And, and if that's not seamless, then it becomes a very frustrating experience for the end user, and ultimately, um, those are the end users that may wander off to another service provider. But you're saying this is doable now? We're doing it today. Well, that's, that's, that's good news, and uh, I think I think certainly from the standpoint of, of being able to move ahead with these uh, high value services on the live streams, it's fundamental to have those capabilities in place. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier from the standpoint of a lot of devices don't need cards because they can be managed from afar. Uh, so we are moving away from uh, card-based security and, and devices. Do you, do you see that trend as picking up to where eventually we'll be talking about uh, cardless set-tops, if you will? Well, actually, we're not just talking about it, we're, we're deploying them. Okay, so there are, there are new generations of uh, chipsets from virtually every major set-top box chipset manufacturer that have secure memory, uh, secure microprocessors embedded in the chipset. And Very Matrix was one of the, the first to embrace and adopt that type of concept. So we actually have customers today on, on pure one-way networks that are not using smart cards. And we eliminate some of the vulnerabilities um, by not having that channel between the smart card and the central processor between and with the set-top box. Everything is within one very tightly coupled and integrated package. One of the things that those kinds of chips are going into, of course, are new media gateways. A lot of operators are looking at uh, leveraging the media gateway as the point of distribution for IP content. Uh, uh, sometimes even to the point of transcoding it from the MPEG-2 into that IP. Uh, but that gets into another whole level of security questions because, uh, you know, it's it's ironclad security until it gets to the gateway and then all of a sudden it's, uh, uh, you know, the Wild West moving off of the gateway uh, where you have the home network that needs to be protected and some of that protection is, uh, you know, not necessarily all protected end to end. And, and then again, you have having to apply the multiple uh, uh, types of 
protection that each device requires. Uh, how do you get that handled if you're you know, trying to do it off a media gateway? Well, we've done it. We've, we've implemented um, a solution called ViewRight Gateway, which basically means that you can either uh, take the encrypted content all the way through and, and transfer rights to other devices within the home, um, fully configurable for, for the operator. Um, but it, it, again, it, it comes down to content owner requirements. They, they don't like the situation that you just described about you know, content getting to the gateway and then it's the wild, wild west from there forward. And, and so Very Matrix does one thing, and that's security and we ensure that we provide the adequate levels of security to all levels of the value chain and distribution chain so that our operators and customers can enjoy um, all of the, the cool new technology that is now available. Do you have any uh, examples, I mean this is all coming along so fast and so new, are, are, do you have customers that are, that are implementing this and, and, and do you have some instances where uh, successful integration of, of different multiple networks around the security paradigms have, have, have been implemented? Absolutely. Um, Free Matrix currently has over 650 customers in around about 109 countries. Um, within the last 15 months, um, we've signed around about 70 uh, multi-network uh, deployments where it's been a combination of either IPTV and OTT, a combination of DVB and OTT. And even in some cases, believe it or not, a combination of DVB, IPTV and OTT. Okay, so it, it's it's happening today. It's it's happening very quickly, and uh, one very good example I think of that would be a company called Comhem, uh, which is based in Sweden. Uh, Comhem is the largest cable operator in Sweden, and they were actually using a, a so-called uh, legacy conditional access system, a card-based system on that cable network. But as they started to move towards a, a multi-device uh, type of multi-room strategy. <clears throat> they chose Very Matrix. Um, Very Matrix partnered with TiVo, uh, and TiVo has a, a very well known, very, very good solution which has been implemented at Comhem and, and it manages the entire multi screen offering uh, all the way through connected TVs uh, to set top boxes to mobile devices and all from that single management console. And it's been wildly successful. And they've gotten the licenses to distribute their content in, in these different places? Absolutely. Yeah, that's the proof in the pudding, right? It is, yeah. yeah. It is. Uh, Steve, just quickly, I, I, I want to shift gears here and, and look at another um, vantage, uh, which is you know the content supplier vantage on all this. Um, and, you know, we're, we're seeing so much going on with respect to the, the content suppliers, owners, um, creating opportunities with, with retail outlets, uh, basically a wholesale model of offering their content uh, for distribution at these retail points, but obviously all these guys out there in the marketplace are not about to put together the infrastructure to support the, what we've been talking about. Uh, so, you know, are, are there ways in which uh, this is, is being handled that a content provider at some central point can do all that encryption and yet be ensured that the keys for using that content, no matter who the retail distributor is, and no matter who the end user is, and what device they're using, will actually be decrypted. Yes, um, we, we have partners that are doing that today. Um, one classic example would be a company called Viewbiquity, uh, formerly known as Avail TVN. Uh, they provide a, a content offering um, which, which is aggregated from multiple uh, content owners um, and, and then they have a so-called wholesale retail uh, model where they deliver uh, that content to uh, regional uh, telcos um, and that is seamless. Uh, I mean, they, they can service hundreds of uh, retail or, or uh, telco outlets from that network. We're also working with um, individual content owners that are seeking um, more proximity to the end customer. Mm -hmm. and, and so they're setting up um, you know, 
um, view anywhere type of deployment. So if you're a subscriber with a particular cable operator and you're paying for that subscription with the cable operator, you can also sign up with a, a direct relationship with those content owners. And, and so what we think we'll see in the future is, is really um, the content can be encrypted once at the content owner site. Uh, that eliminates a very vulnerable uh, piece of the uh, delivery chain. So we're moving back in the network and then it's distributed fully encrypted and secured by Verimatrix and probably uh, forensically watermarked. And uh, that can then be delivered all the way to the end customer without ever being decrypted until it's, it gets to the end customer. It's, it says a lot about how uh, the HBO Go model is going to become ubiquitous. I Absolutely, think. yes. And, and in that process, I guess, um, it, it creates a new dynamic as far as the, the, the content owner's point of uh, control of their destinies and the opportunity to monetize and the whole nine yards. They, it certainly does, and, and I, I firmly believe that the content owners want, they want more control they, they need more security. Um, anyone that thinks that the security requirements are going away is, uh, uh, you know, that's just wishful thinking. Um, we're seeing increased requirements on security as, as new paradigms and new business models evolve. Uh, one classic example is in the 4K TV space. Um, very expensive TVs. Um, we've been doing some uh, quite special work in terms of forensic watermarking with uh, with those 4K TV manufacturers to ensure that when they put you know what is truly ultra high value content out there yeah. that if someone steals it because it's very easy to camcorder you know a, a, a virtually perfect picture um, it's forensically watermarked and and so it's traceable back to the last legal recipient and that way they can shut down uh, the areas of leakage very interesting. Well, it's it's going to be a new day with respect to how content can be secured in all these different ways and how that affects the uh, various business strategies of all the players. Uh, we'll be watching very closely. Certainly is, and uh, I think Very Matrix is uniquely positioned with, with a, a true, tried, tested solution uh, to meet not, not only the needs of today but also the future needs as, as they evolve. Well, thanks for sharing this with us, Steve. I really appreciate it. You're welcome, Fred. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you.